I've got three top of the range full face sport touring helmets here. The Arrow Quantic, the Shoei GTR 3 and the HJC R for 71. We'll also be talking to Steve Lamb about his Shark Spartan GT Pro Carbon. Now these are all ECE 2206 helmets which means they've been tested and proven to offer higher levels of protection than what the old 2205 test could show. So by the end of this video, you should have a better idea of which one is best for you. Right, no messing about, let's get started with fit first. It's the most important thing when you buy any helmet from any brand, even if you've used them before, because things can change. Throughout this video, I'm gonna directly compare the Arai, Shoei, and HJC as I've worn them all back to back. But we'll also speak to Steve later about his thoughts on the Shark. So personally, the Arai has the edge for me in fit out of these three, and it's slightly more relaxed in the way it conforms. Now by that, I mean it doesn't feel quite as tight around the cheeks. It still stays perfectly in place at speed, but a more race-focused lid, like with Arai's the RX-7, for instance, that's a more snug fit all the way around the cheeks, everything, to uh, ensure it doesn't move at all at very high track speeds. Now the Shoei is a little tighter feeling on me than the Arai, and the HJC slightly tighter still. Now it's worth noting, by the way, that Arai dealers, especially the pro shops, should be able to swap out the cheek pads and other parts to ensure a perfect fit before you buy. Now as this video goes out, Shoei is setting up its custom fit service at several dealers, but of the helmets in this review, Arai, Shoei and Shark can all offer help if you've bought a lid and you're having problems with the fit afterwards. If you check the video up here, you'll see how one bike social member got his Shark sorted out for him and how you can get the perfect fit for you, whatever you buy. Now again, personally, I tend to find Arai the most comfortable because in my experience, they have the softest polystyrene inner shell, which tends to conform to my head more easily. And obviously I wear glasses, and the Arai is the easiest to get them in. The Shoei are very close second, with the HJC trailing behind a little, being a bit awkward to get the uh, arms over my ears. Still, it's much better than some other helmets I've worn, even ones supposedly designed for glasses. So fit is the most important thing, and this section has also been the least useful, really, as it's so subjective. You really do need to try a helmet on. So while some big stores offer free returns, I'd really recommend you go into a shop to try them on if you can. You can also get some help from the staff as you'd be surprised just how many people buy helmets that are the wrong size for them. Now we're gonna run through each key thing you need to know before buying one of these lids. And remember that we'll be covering the shark later. So let's look at the outer shell. Now these three are all composite fiber lids, each with their own specific technologies and all three helmets have a great finish. And I did deliberately get the HJC in a similar paint scheme to the Shoei to compare them. Maybe that's a bit unfair on the Arai in plain gray, but that is available in graphics too. Now let's look at the prices. The HJC R for 71 is £399.99 for plain colors and £449.99 for graphics. The Arrow Quantic is £499.99 in plain colors and £599.99 in graphics. And the Shoei GTR 3 is £529.99 in black or white, £549.99 in plain colours, and £649.99 in graphics. Now ignoring the fact that the Arai looks plainer here, they do all have an excellent finish with a deep gloss. The Shoei and HJC stand out here with their metallic flake and lovely colours, but Arai's graphics can look great too, though there's not much choice in the Quantic only five designs for the UK at the moment. And the reason you have to pay more for graphics is that they tend to be put on by hand. So HJC really stands out here with the cheaper price. But if you look really closely, and I am nitpicking, the HJC, which is made in Korea, doesn't have quite the same super high quality feel of the Arai and Shoei. Those two are handmade in Japan, which explains some of the extra cost, but there are little things like tiny, and I mean tiny, imperfections in the HJC clear coat that you don't find on the other two. And there's a slight overlap line of the graphics here at the front. Still, it's 150 pound cheaper in graphics than the Arai, and 200 pounds cheaper than the Shoei. If you want the absolute best finish and feel of build quality, you do have to pay for it, but you'll need to look very closely to see the difference. I should add that the paint on Arrows seems to chip a little easier in my experience. Maybe it's to do with the extremely hard shell 
not flexing when I smack my head on the garage door, or I've just been very unlucky with the odd rare stone strike. Most premium helmets have a range of different outer shell sizes across the range of head sizes. Basically, this just means that if you have a small head, you won't need to put up with a massive lid wobbling around with unnecessary weight. Now, each of these has three different outer shell sizes, but if you have a big noggin, your choice might be limited. The Arai is only available in extra small to extra large. The Shoei has an additional 2XL size option, while the HJC goes up to 2XL. Look, in almost 30 years of riding, I've not had a helmet that I thought was too heavy. You can feel the difference between two lids in the hand, but I've never had a problem with any on my head. Some shops might try handing you the lid they want you to buy with two hands, then the other that they claim is too heavy when you only have one hand free. Or they'll just tell you how much fatigue you'll get. Now, I'm no bodybuilder, but helmet weight has never caused me neck strain. What really matters is aerodynamics, how much drag you get head on into the wind and when turning your head. All three of these are great with no issues at all, but if you want to know, on my scales, these medium lids come in at 1,588 grams for the Arai, 1,668 grams for the HJC, and 1,678 grams for the Shoei. So what happened to that old trope that Arai's are heavy? All the EC2206 helmets I've tested so far have been around this way, and I'm not complaining. Now, as I said, all three of these are ECE 2206 helmets, and so's the uh, Shark that Steve's gonna be covering, which means they've been tested and certified by an independent notified body to meet or exceed a far more stringent set of tests than ECE 2205 called for. There's also a new oblique impact test to check the rotational energy that could be transferred to the brain. And there are now random testing points too, so there's no chance of anyone designing a lid to only be strong in the areas that are tested. The gist is that ECE 2206 helmets are provably safer than ECE 2205 ones. Anything beyond that though has to be treated as marketing hypes because we don't have any evidence. Whatever a salesman tries to tell you, Arai and Shoei are not tested to a higher standard than the mandatory ones. All helmets are tested independently to the same standards, which are appropriate to the country they're being sold in. So there are differences for Japan, UK and Europe, um, USA. Some, like Arai for instance, do in-house testing, and there are some higher levels achieved than are required for ECE certification. But how do we know other brands might not meet or exceed those in-house tests? We don't. So it's impossible to say that one lid is safer than another unless it can be proven. It's no good falling back on anecdotes of this helmet saved me in a crash, as the real world is too chaotic and we can't know how anything else might have performed in exactly the same circumstances. The only way to compare the potential safety of helmets and of course any riding kit is through repeatable testing. Those are the facts. Everything else is emotion or sales pitch. Now I've been to the Arai factory in Japan and had the absolute honor of talking to Michio Arai and his son Aki. I've chatted many times with the UK and European distributors and I know why Arai believes that not incorporating a drop down sunshield makes for a safer helmet. I can see how it's peripherally belted, e-complex laminate construction, which includes strengthening around the uh, eye port should help. I understand why it's always gone for the roundest shape helmet. And to me, the idea of a harder outer shell and softer inner does seem to make sense. I like how Arai is the only helmet manufacturer to use a one piece polystyrene in a shell. It's different densities in different areas, whereas all the others use multiple separate pieces of polystyrene. That's Arai's method. It's more expensive to make and assemble but I don't have any evidence that this makes them safer. And until I do, I won't stand here and tell you that this is more protective. All I will say is that I am convinced that Arai believes it is making the safest possible helmets, and I admire that. It's well worth watching this video of Michio Arai talking about why Arai won't change. It'll be linked at the end too and in the description because it's well worth settling down with a drink to take in. The thing is, I also feel well protected when I'm wearing other ECE 2206 helmets. And just to throw a curveball into this video, one of my favourite lids is the Shoei Neotech 3 flip front. 
All of these have good ventilation, but the Arai is, for me, the best here, thanks to this new vent on the front, channeling a lot of the air smoothly over your head and out of the exhaust. The other two give a really good, strong blast of air, but you can feel it in a specific spot. It still flows and keeps your head cool well, but the HCC is quite all or nothing on the top, and the Shoei still has that bit of kind of, kind of a pressure point of cold jet. And looking inside them, you can see the ports that allow air in and the exhaust ports. There are 14 holes inside the Shoei, and like the HAC, its exhaust ports are on the top. The idea being, I guess, that the wind rushing over it could more effectively draw stale air out. My only slight issue here is under extreme conditions, some water can find its way in here on the Shoei and the HAC. The chin vents all seem to do a good job of blowing air up and over the back of the visor, your glasses if you wear them, and to your brow. The HAC is, for my head shape at least, slightly draftier around the neck skirt, and you can see in the cheek pads, they don't seem to have the same sharper edge shape of the Aoi or Shoei. It's not bad by any stretch, but overall the Aoi has the best venting, the Shoei second, and the HAC just behind that. Though I reckon the Shoei seals a little better around my neck than the Aoi when the chin skirt's fitted. So maybe that's better really in the winter. Though the visor on the Aoi is more easily adjustable to be just cracked open, but let's go to that now. Right, yeah, the Arai has no drop-down sunshield, so for many of you, that's narrowed the field down already. And I get that. In a sport touring helmet, you kind of expect one, but Arai refuses to introduce that gap between the outer and inner shells. Personally, I prefer to wear a dark visor in bright sunlight, as I have fewer pieces of plastic in front of my eyes, so get better clarity. And when it's low sun, like in autumn, you just can't beat a, a peak on your, on your helmet. But... I'm not going to pretend that a drop-down sunshield isn't handy, and the Shoei has the best one I've used so far, besides the Neotech 3, which is the same. Now, normally, I find a distracting gap of light between the bottom of the shield and the visor aperture, but the design of the Shoei is, is pretty much perfect. The HAC is good, but there's just a bit of a gap above the nose, a bit too much for me, at least. Try them on and see what you think. Now as for the main visors, the Shoei's got a central thumb tab that's easy to reach with either hand, so great when you're holding the uh, clutch in at traffic lights. Uh, and, and though it takes a little bit of a knack, it's easy to lock and unlock. It's also easy to remove the visor for cleaning, and it's got a fair range of positions, but the one thing I don't like is that although you can crack it just off locked easily, the next stage is about four centimeters high, which puts the bottom edge in my eye line. I'd have liked a one centimeter stage to just get some more air in. I love the fact that the Arai visor is infinitely adjustable, so I can set it where I want. I don't have any problems with the visor changing mechanism, I think it's good, but I know some people struggle with it. It's, it's really not, that hard though. My only complaint, and it is a real complaint, is that it's hard to operate the visor lock with my right hand. If it weren't for that, the Arrow would have my favourite visor. Of these three, at least. And the HJC loses out, I'm afraid. The removal system is stunningly brilliant. Pull the lever on either side and the visor pops out. Those levers hold the mechanism open and lock automatically back in when you put it back, which is brilliant. All of the visors stay fully open when ridden in but there are only three secure stages to the HJC. The top one, a middle one that's directly in your eye line, and closed. At all other settings, it just flops down. Now, realistically, you're unlikely to want to set a visor somewhere in this range, but beyond just cracked open, there's nothing lower than that middle opening that I can set the visor to and ride in. And it, to me, I just want that gap, like the show, you know, I want that little gap. To lock it shut fully, you need to push on the top edge of the visor, and unlocking it really needs your left hand. Fortunately, you don't really need to lock it fully. All three of these come with top-level Pinlock 120 anti-fog inserts, though the Shoei's is called the Evo. It's the same performance, though. One thing I would say is that the Shoei's Pinlock doesn't reach as far around the sides as the other two. I didn't actually notice it until watching Tony Hall's excellent video on the Sports Bike Shop channel, but it is just there in your peripheral vision. The other two are better, really. So overall, the Arai wins for me here, except for the lack of a sunshield, which is a big deal, and is why I tried this Arai Pro Shade. It's been about for a long time, and despite a lot of people saying how good it is, I'd never tried one until now, and I think it's terrible. Sorry, Arai, but for me at least, it just doesn't work. I hope that it might double up as a peak in low sun, but it doesn't really, especially in high contrast light. And of course, there's a massive gap of bright light at the bottom when it's down. I find it a bit awkward to use, and it introduces a very slight drumming, at, at least on the GS. 
It may well suit some people, but it's 100 quid, and I'd rather pay 60 pound for a dark visor. When I wear a dark visor though, I always carry a clear visor with me, either in a pouch like this around my waist or in the luggage. That way, if it gets dark when I'm out, I can switch them. But yeah, a well-made drop-down sunshield built into the lid is more convenient. All three of these have comfortable linings with antimicrobial features and stuff like that. They're all removable for cleaning, and while the Arai is the most complex in its construction, what it comes down to is how they feel to you. The lining's obviously part of comfort and fit, so try them on. You should hand wash the linings once you've taken them out of the lids, but I put them in the helmet bag, tie that up, then pop them on a gentle wash in the machine. But don't blame me if you do that and it goes wrong. The HJC and the AI both have double D fasteners, which are fine and do ensure a good tight fit every time, but they're almost impossible to use with gloves on. The Shoei has a micrometric fastener, which is a lot easier. You set it up when you first get it, then there's always enough movement in the ratchet to get a snug fit every time. Definitely my favourite. All helmets need earplugs over about 40 mile an hour. A lot of companies test their helmets in wind tunnels, but it's on naked bikes. The thing is, it's the screen and fairing on your bike that introduces most of the noise, and that depends on the motorcycle, your height, riding position, and what accessories you have on the bike and behind the screen. There's so many variables that one person might think a helmet's really quiet, while another will swear blind it's the noisiest thing ever. None of these are what I'd call noisy. I reckon the Shoei is just about the quietest of the three, but I can't be sure even stopping and swapping them repeatedly. It, there's, there's like a different sound to each. I reckon the Arai is second and the HJC third. I did get a weird buffeting in the chin vent of the Shoei with the screen fully up on my GS, but I have a tablet mounted behind it and adjusting the screen just a crack cured it. None of them are bad, and it might be the slight draft I get behind the ears for the HJC that made that seem a fraction louder. How a helmet fits you makes a massive difference too, so unless there's a weird whistling or drumming or something caused by a design flaw, most helmets tend to be pretty similar if you can eliminate all the variables. And of course, in our written reviews, which you can find at bikesocial.co.uk, we cover design flaws and things like that in other helmets. These are all fine. The Arai is the easiest to fit your own intercom to as it's not designed to take a built-in one. I use this Cardo on mine and the speakers fit into the cheek pads fine. The Shoei is meant to take the SRL3, which I'm reviewing on the Neotech 3 at the moment. This is a Senna Bluetooth and mesh system. The mesh is much better if you ride in large groups and you'll find the review soon at bikesocial.co.uk. In fact, there are hundreds of product and bike reviews on there and we keep them updated so it's the best way to find out how good something is. Whatever you're looking for, Google it and look for the Bennett's logo and you'll know it's an in-depth and independent review. Now, these blanking plates make it harder to fit your intercom, but I was able to fit one slightly further back than I'd have liked. The 44mm speakers go in fine, while the larger Cardo JBL speakers stick out a touch, but felt good to me, well, you know, against my ears. The HAC is the hardest, as there's very little room to work with. If these blanking plates had been smooth, it'd be easy to stick one here, but they're not. 44mm speakers fit into the plastic recesses inside okay, but the larger Cardo JBL stick out a fair bit more, so check the fit for yourself if, you know, if, if you've got any concerns or you're going to do that. Now the Alpha 71 really is designed to use the HJC 21B Bluetooth or the 50B Bluetooth mesh systems that are also made by Senna. Now Steve Lamb's been using the Shark Spartan GT Pro carbon lid, so let's add that into the mix before we get to the verdict. I've been wearing Shark's Spartan GT Pro now for between six and nine months. And while I can't guarantee this is going to be the perfect lid for you, after all, all of our head shapes are different and we all look for different things in a crash helmet, for me, it's pretty much been the perfect lid. If we're taking a look around it, if we look at the shell, it's a composite mix of traditional glass fibre construction overlaid with carbon fibre. And while that's not as light as a traditional fully carbon fiber helmet, this one comes in at about 1,655 grams. The combination of glass fiber and fiberglass reinforcement hits that sweet spot of price versus strength. It's available in all the regular sizes, extra small all the way to two times extra large, and it comes in two shell sizes. So I think extra small up to medium is the small shell size. Sizes above that come to the larger shell size that I've got here. It comes in a variety of finishes from matte black all the way through to the nice shiny graphics ones that we've got here. And prices range from 479 all the way up to 509 for the top of the range graphics. 
One of the standout features for me on this lid, though, has been the visors. And as you'd expect with uh, sports touring orientated helmets now, there's two visors, the outer and the and the sun shield visor. But what really has stood out for this for me is the just the sheer smooth action and the number of positions that the visor will sit in. Um, I've tried several lids in the past that are either open or closed. You know, you don't get that nice midway point of, of just cracked open or midway. Um, but with the Shark, it's really nice. There's a really smooth mechanism at the sides. Easily adjustable. I've, I've worn Sharks for, this is my third Shark now, so I've worn them for a while. After a while, the ratchet loosens off a little bit. Um, but there's quite a quite an easy little uh, one and a half mil hex key here. You can just tighten it up a little bit and just get the adjustment that you need. So the visors I really like. The lining I love. You can see from here that it's quite a small opening actually. The combination of the chin skirt and the uh, the surrounding lining makes it actually quite difficult to get on without bending your ears over. Um, especially if you wear glasses, you know, take your glasses off, put your lid on. So and once it's on, it's a really nice snug fit. It's fastened with a traditional double D ring, which for me, it's nice and easy to to, attack, uh, to fasten. I've run through the bits that I enjoy about the helmet. There's two little flaws for me. One is that, and this is a this is a thing that's common with shark helmets and people that I've seen at shows or at BSB events when I've seen them wearing a shark helmet, I always ask them if they experience it too. And that's that when the visor is fully up, the mechanism just catches in the wind and it speeds over about 40 miles an hour. It really whistles. Um, it's bugging, it's not a deal breaker. And you know, as soon as you adjust the adjust the visor a little bit, you can soon get it out of the wind flow. If you've got a high screen on your bike, then probably you won't get that wind flow around the lid anyway. So it's not gonna be a problem for you. The other thing that I think could just be slightly improved is the front ventilation. And I think this is more, it's more aimed at sports riders who are gonna have their head tipped down a little bit because the vents, the vents open to the to the top rather than to the front. And so you just lack that direct airflow. That in accommodation with the, with the uh, chin skirt just means that it's a, it is a nice snug warm helmet and it just means that your glasses are just a little bit more prone to fogging. The vent on the top is excellent. As soon as you open it up, you get a nice airflow across the top of your head, especially when you haven't got much hair to get in the way. The exhaust vents at the back are, are openable and closable, so it's up to you how much airflow you get through on a cold day. Coming back from the NEC in November, you know, you close them down, it's a nice warm helmet. As soon as you get a little bit over, over warm, you can open it up and get some decent airflow through it. For me, the Shark, once I've got earplugs in, it's, it's a nice, quiet, tranquil place to be. Um, I've, in combination with a high screen that I've got on my Honda at the moment, I can easily do motorway speeds with the visor open quite comfortably. Um, you know, when, it's, not, it's not dead quiet, but it's enough that I can listen to music while I'm riding. So I would say, you know, really good, nice, quiet helmet. The Shark Spartan GT Pro is built for Shark's proprietary intercom system, the Shark Tooth Bluetooth system, and there's a small aperture at the back of the helmet to fit that. But I haven't got that. I just bought a, a, a generic Amazon Bluetooth headset just because I listen to music. I'm not too fussed about uh, talking to other people while I'm riding. Um, there's headphone apertures in the sides that will fit decent size um, headphones. 42 mil, I think mine are, and they fit nicely. There's plenty of room around the sides to fit that. The lining is easy to remove, so you can feed all your wires in and get a nice, neat fit. For me, it's been nigh on the perfect lid. There's a couple of foibles with the ventilation and the visor, but nothing really that's a deal breaker for me. Now we've heard from Steve too. I should point out that you can ask either of us, as well as the rest of the bike social team, anything you want at our Facebook group. Well, within reason. There are thousands of riders on there and it's a great place to get advice, share your experiences and discover new places to go. So please do come and say hello. So my perfect sport touring full face helmet would have the Arise venting and comfort, the HJC's visor attachment mechanism with everything else to do with the main visor being lifted from the shark. I'd have the Showy's drop down sunshield, Showy's micrometric fastener and its paint job because I love these pearlescent areas and, and the quality of finish and it'd have the HJC's price. Pretty much none of that will ever happen, but what you choose is so personal. Hopefully by highlighting the good and bad of each of these, and they are all good purchases in their own right, you'll have a better idea of which one you'd buy. Let me know in the comments and why, as I'm honestly interested. But which do I wear most? Well, the Shark is Steve's, and I do like them a lot, but they don't seem to fit me quite as well, so it's down to the three I have here. 
The first helmet I bought was an Arai back in 1996, and honestly, when I get to wear what full face helmet I choose, not what I'm testing, I'm probably more likely to be in an Arai, but that's mainly down to comfort, nothing else. Having said that, the GT Air 3 Sunshield really is brilliant, so that's spending a lot more time on my head. So I think I'm gonna say, in this market, that's the one I'm going for, the Shoei GT Air 3. Now they're all a big investment, but divided by the five years or so you'll be wearing one if you can. In plain colours, the HJC works out at £80 a year, the Arai at 100 and the Shoei at 106 Of course, that's before you find any special offers, and I just checked, and the HJC in these graphics can be had for £360 at the moment, or the equivalent of £72 a year over five years. So that's less than it, the RRP for plain colours. Ultimately, take what matters to you most from this entire video, then choose from that. But try on whatever you choose before you buy, because what's most important is that it fits you properly. Sorry to add confusion to this, but in the low sun, I prefer the Arrow Tour X5 because of its peak. And probably my favorite overall helmet for day-to-day -day use is the Shoei Neotech 3. Sorry.